their common sense nation. I want to share a, uh, a, a passage with you. Matthew chapter 5. Most of you are familiar with this. This is the Lord Jesus talking. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a candle and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, what is the job of Christians in the world? We are supposed to be salt and light. Salt helps plants, animals, and humans survive. Salt is essential for bone, muscles, and the circulatory system of the body. Salt can be used to preserve food or even kill things. We know that plants, animals, and humans need light to grow also and to survive. So our job as Christian is to be an essential part of the world to help it grow, preserve, and kill off unwanted things. One of the first mentions of salt in the Bible is over in Genesis. It says, but Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Now, most think that Lot's wife merely took a quick glance and looked back. But some have suggested that the Hebrew word that is used, nabat, N-A-B-A-T, uh, which means uh, to look intently in a favorable manner. In other words, she was not uh, turned off by the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. She wasn't turned off by their action. Complete debauchery did not turn off Miss Lot. If you ever read the story, you will see that uh, what Miss Lot was experiencing in Sodom and Gomorrah had rubbed off on the children also. So Miss Lot was not the kind of salt you want to be. Salt is mentioned probably about 40 times in the Bible. So salt was and still is a very important commodity in the world. So in Matthew chapter 5, the Lord Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and trampled underfoot. Now the master says, you are the salt of the earth. Who was this you Jesus was talking about? He was speaking to those who have been set apart, those who follow his teaching. People do not have a problem talking about their failure. I know you think they do, but they really don't. People don't have a problem with talking about their failures or their sins action. What they have a problem with is calling their failures sin. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. People will glorify their sins as opposed to mourning over their sins and repenting to God Almighty. But as children of the one who paid for our sin, he commands us to confess and repent of our sins, our shortcomings. Then we can be salt and light if we confess our sins. He will forgive us of our sins. Then we can become salt and light. Over in Leviticus chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible says, every grain offering of yours, moreover you shall season with salt. Grain offerings are to be seasoned with salt, so that the salt of the covenant of your God shall not be lacking from your grain offering with all your offerings, you shall offer salt. I love the way the Bible lays out things for you. Over in Romans chapter 
12, verse 1. You remember what it says? I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Leviticus talk about the grain offering, a sacrifice of the grain offering being seasoned with salt. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we are living, we are a living sacrifice, and we need to add repentance and his word to our offering. This will be like adding salt to our sacrifice. Salt is an essential nutrient for many animals, plants, and humans. Your body cannot function without salt. It can't. Plants cannot function without salt. Uh, animals cannot function without salt. Plants need a certain amount of salt or saline solution in order to grow. However, too much salt is bad for plants. Too much salt may prevent the plant's water intake causing it to die. As a matter of fact, you can use salt in order to kill a tree. Animals also need salt to survive. Cows need salt every day in order to make milk. When cows do not get enough salt, they lose their appetite, causing them to lose weight. Did you hear what I say? When cows do not get enough salt, they lose their appetite. Mm. Salt helps the appetite. When cows crave salt, they will begin to eat just about anything. That's including rocks, dirt, even wood. So cows start acting like pigs, but pigs eat anything. Natural salt licks are sometimes put out for animals in the wild. And farmers even put out salt blocks for their cattle. Humans need salt to maintain health also. Sodium is an essential for the nerve and muscle functions. And in, it involved in the, uh, the, the regulation of fluids in the body. The human body cannot live without some sodium. It's needed to transmit nerve impulses. I'm sure this happened by accident when the Lord Almighty was making the body. See, the, 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 it's needed to transmit nerve impulses, contract and relax muscle fibers, including those in the heart and blood vessels, and is used to maintain a proper fluid balance. The Lord Jesus says that believers are supposed to be the salt of the earth. They are to first take in his word so that they will build up more of a thirst for God. Mm. I said, see, salt makes you thirsty. But in order for you to build up a thirst for God, you need to intake a healthy intake of his word. You see, salt helps build the thirst. And just like cows will eat anything if they don't get enough salt in their diet, humans will digest anything that the world has to offer if they are not introduced to the salt of God's word. There are certain ingredients that make up salt, and there are certain ingredients that make up a salty disciple also. So what are the, some of the ingredients in a salty disciple? The Lord Jesus uh, says that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Being poor in spirit is an ingredient of a salty disciple. What does the Lord Jesus mean by poor in spirit? He means those who recognize that they have nothing in themselves that makes them worthy of heaven. You hear what I say? So these poor in spirit places all their trust in a merciful God. That's why Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. Now another ingredient of a salty disciple is meekness. For the master says, Blessed are the meek, for they would inherit the earth. Meek people are hard to provoke and to revenge. Their very disposition are character 
is mildness and gentleness. Meek does not mean cowards. When it's time to stand up, meek people do not be silent. Meekness is power under control. The Lord Jesus says these people will inherit the earth. But there is more. We will need to become the salt of the earth. The Lord says, blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be satisfied. See, the Samaritan woman at the well wanted the water that the Lord Jesus was offering. And guess what? She got it because she was thirsty for it. One of the problems with those who say uh, that they follow the Lord Jesus Christ is that they are not attempting to be salt or light. You see, salt was also used to preserve things. You remember in uh, Luke chapter 19, the Lord Jesus was telling the parable about the 10 servants. In verse 13, he says, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. That is the job of all believers. We are to occupy or be salt until the Lord Jesus returns. We also must add some mercy in order to get a salty disciples. Mm -hmm. You need mercy. The Lord says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Who can't take a little mercy? Everybody needs a little mercy sometimes. God Almighty has shown us great mercy. So we should be willing to show mercy, especially when people are asking for it. This is why Paul writes, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. There is another important ingredient that we need to be salty disciples. See, the Lord Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This is a reward that all those who genuinely seek God will be rewarded for, rewarded by seeing God. See, the pure in the heart love the truth. The pure in the heart love the things of God. The pure in the heart seeks to do things God's way because they walk by faith in a pure God. James 3 and 17 says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. See, the last ingredients that we want to add, this is not all the ingredients. I just want to give you some brief in ingredients. You can go read the Beatitudes. You can get a lot of ingredients out of that. But the last ingredients that we want to add uh, to being a salty disciple is a peacemaker. My Lord Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Have you ever been around people that are always causing division and chaos? They are the opposite of a peacemaker. Peacemakers love when everyone is getting along. Peacemakers do not simply go along to get along. A peacemaker wants to get along with people, but they will not compromise the truth because compromising the truth will not lead to true peace. Remember that the Lord Jesus says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Can salt lose its saltiness is the question. Historically, salt has been obtained from crude sources such as salt marshals and minerals such as rock salt. This contains a, uh, a, a stable sodium chloride plus other components. The problem with uh, sodium chloride is, is, a, is, is a readily water suitable. So it's, 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 so it's this, this crude salt was to get exposed to, say, condensation or rainwater, the sodium chloride would be dissolved and removed, and the salt could, in effect, lose its saltiness. 
When we water down the word of God, we are setting ourselves up for being unsalty. Do not water down the word of God. If the word of God says something, don't look for an out clause. Don't read something into the text. Exegete the text. Pay attention to it. Put it in context and make sure we are addressing it in context. Because when you start watering down the word of God, there's a lot of danger in that. First of all, you become unsalty. Second of all, you start insulting the things of God. You are never to water down the word of God to make people comfortable because you're making them comfortable for hell. The word of God can never lose its power or saltiness, but you can lose your saltiness. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, whenever a church or a Christian starts compromising they become less effective. They lose power. The word of God don't lose power. The person who's compromising loses power. The Lord Jesus says, your job is to be salt to the earth. When you, read, when you season your food, do you want uh, the salt to not be salty when you season your food? What's the use of shaking salt on food if it's not salty? See, that ain't no salt at all. That salt is good for nothing. A believer who stops believing and following after the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ will cease to be effective. If you are a lukewarm believer, you are salt that has lost its saltiness. When salt loses its saltiness, the Lord Jesus says it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Do you realize that uh, they also place salt on frozen roads because it's said that the salt can even lower the freezing point. When you got a cold church, you need to throw some salt on it. You need to, uh, you need to get that freezing point down. I'm about to freeze up in you. The demons don't even have to work in some of these places where they're saying that they love Jesus, but there is no salt there. They're watering down the word of God. They say that salt is also affected in melting snow. When, when humans lose their saltiness, it's good for nothing. It will take the potter. You know who the potter is, don't you? It takes the potter to make it again another. Because he can do it. The Bible says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the Lord Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. See, your light is shining not to glorify you. Jesus once says, I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He is now declaring that those who follow him will reflect his light. Light is essential to part of our survival. We cannot survive without light. People who go without suns too long have become depressed. It is bad for your health not to get sun exposure. Have you ever heard of what they call rickets? Rickets is caused by lack of vitamin D. They put it in the orange juice and everything. Now people can get it other ways. But uh, rickets is caused by lack of vitamin D in one's diet. And this is especially true in children. You may say, what does that has to do with light? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because it's been said that children growing up in, say, like a Victorian slums, suffer from bone deformities such as bowed legs and curvature, uh, kind of like a uh, rounded off spine. This was due to their uh, lack of vitamin D or lack of sunlight. We have many other ways now to get vitamin D in our diets, but light also affects the growth of plants. Without light, a plant would not be able to produce the energy it needs to grow. Without the sun, we would all die. That is, without the S-U-N, 
humans would die off. And without the S-O-N, you will die and go to hell. He is essential to eternal life. There is no eternal life outside the S-O-N. So you need the S-U-N physically to survive. You need the S-O-N to survive in eternity. What is the first thing you usually do when you come home and you come into a room? You turn on the lights. Why is that? So you can see where you are going. Even in the daytime, people turn on the lights sometimes. So if you are the light of the world, what is your job to do? Stop people from bumping or running into things because they're walking in darkness. We are to be a, a, a people that are set on a hill. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. We are supposed to be uh, a town or a community of people that can be put on display for the world to see, but they are not to look at us or our light. Really, we have no light. Just like the moon only reflects the light of the sun, so our light is to point them to the, G to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. We are to point them to Jesus, not us. Don't start beating your chest. You said, don't look at me, look at Jesus. Remember when Peter and John healed the man? They said, don't look at us as if we've done anything, but the same one you crucified, this is why this man is walking, because of Jesus. See, we are to expose darkness. If we are to be light of this world, what is the use of having a lamp that does not shine? Look what the master says next. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Have you ever seen people light a, a, a lamp and go stick it under the bed? What sense do that even make? You get a chandelier, you say, I'm going to put the chandelier in the closet. So if you are to be light of this world, your job as a lamp or a light is to give light to every room you enter, every community you enter. By room, I mean everywhere you go. Jesus says you are the light of the world. Our job is to be salt and light. Make sure that you study his word so that you will have the ingredients in order to be salt and light in the world. He says you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You cannot be the salt and light if you don't follow the Lord Jesus and if you don't stay in his word.